Hello all, today we're going to talk about error bars and graphs. Whenever we prepare graphs for presentations or manuscripts, we like to add error bars to show how much variability is in our participants within each group and or at each time period. Depending on the type of error bar, they are also helpful for approximating statistical significance and effect size. However, not everyone uses the same measure to determine how long those error bars should be. Some people use standard deviation, some use standard error, and some use the 95% confidence interval. Standard deviation is a basic measure of how much variability is in your data. Mathematically, it represents the average distance between all your individual data points and the mean. Now, while standard deviation error bars are the purest representation of the variability within your data, I personally don't like them because they tell us very little information as to the statistical significance or effect size of the differences we care about. Which brings us to standard error. Standard error of the mean is an adjustment of the standard deviation to account for the size of the sample. While a large data set might have more variability than a small one, we can expect our sample to better represent the variability in the population we care about. As such, that larger sample will have a smaller standard error to account for this. Using the standard error of the mean as our error bar length is preferable to standard deviation in that it allows us to make rough judgments about the statistical significance of the differences seen in the graph. However, we have to do more than simply look at the error bars to make this assessment. If the error bars overlap by a second error bar length, the means are not significantly different. If they do not overlap, then they are significantly different. I visualize doubling the length of both error bars and determine if it touches the other. As we can see here, the positive rejection group did not differ from the avoidance group in sexual satisfaction. Now, my personal favorite measure to use for error bar length is the 95% confidence interval. Industry standard for null hypothesis testing is to be at least 95% sure that our effect is there in order to call it statistically significant. As such, the 95% confidence interval represents the range in which we are 95% confident the population mean lands. We get this range by taking our standard error and multiplying it by 1.96. That factor comes from the z-distribution, and it is the boundary at which 95% of the area under the curve lies between 1.96 standard errors to either side. The big advantage of using 95% confidence interval error bars is that viewers can easily judge whether the differences are significant or not. Simply check if the error bars overlap, and if they don't, the means are statistically different. That same non-significance is now much easier to see, as well as the significance of the other differences. Well, that's all for now. Please like, share, and subscribe. And if you've got a stats and methods topic you'd like me to cover next, or more thoughts on this one, let me know in the comments.